Welcome to July Set News, to get top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests traditional investors are going to get their hands on Solana in a very easy way, all through the Grayscale Trust. We're going to talk about what's going on there. We're also going to take a look at what exactly is Sol or Solana. We're going to take a look at uh, Bitcoin and the modern portfolio, and we'll round it all out with a little Korea taxes. But before we get started, just as a reminder, uh, Unstoppable Domains, they had Cyber Monday. It is Tuesday today, uh, November 30th, but they've extended it 24 hours. So if you're looking to get uh, your NFT marketplace or your uh, NFT space as far as like transferring everything over from your, your crypto wallets, this is the way to do it. Unstoppable Domains, you get buy one, get one free today. So go ahead and check that out. On top of that, you've also got shopping.io. If you go to places like uh, Amazon, Home Depot, Walmart, uh, those type of places, you get up to 50% off just by purchasing purchasing things with crypto. You just come in here, spin the wheel, and off you go. And that's at shopping.io. Links in the description. But that is what is going on as far as like the deals. Let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today is one of those good days. I mean, nothing really is too fantastic going on. Nothing like uh, huge dips like we saw on Friday because of that variant scare. Eh, whatever. So here we are. We're at uh, 2.66 trillion. Not too bad. And what's amazing, trade the chain always lays it all out for sentiment analysis. The sentiment is so bullish still. I mean, like we just had a pretty sizable dip and then it just, you know, rebound and people were like, yes, that's it. Seems like the fear just kind of goes away and we were just at max fear uh, not too long ago. So I find it interesting that uh, we're able to bounce back that quickly because I think people are expecting the fireworks as we like to call them. So in the last seven days, I mean, the big winner has been Ethereum. Look at this. 8% in seven days, 5% in 24 hours, and 46, almost $4,700. Uh, Solana up 2%, probably by the news we're going to talk about right now. Shiba Inu up 10%. So congratulations to Shiba Inu holders. Terra up 10%. And some decent size profitabilities, but not anything spectacular. And then if we're going to take a look at uh, projected ranges as far as like what to uh, look over the next hour, take a look at GNY, Skycoin, Rary, Nexo, Synthetics, and Monero, interesting. So that's what we have as far as the markets. And then people always are curious as like, well, have we hit the top? Have we hit the top? Well, if we take a look at some indicators and I go through different ones every single time, here's one of my favorites called this Pi Cycle Top Indicator. And what it does is it takes a look at the 350 day moving average times two, overlaps that with the 111 day moving average. And we can see it was retroactively uh, done for the last, because there was four times when it uh, it came true. And the first two in 2013, it happened both in 2013, they retroactively graphed that. But the one in 2017 uh, was pretty much dead on, which was right around uh, ba -ba -ba, December or so when Bitcoin was at 19.3. And then it also predicted it uh, not too long ago. In April, when it hit 67, right around here, if I get it over there, come on. Yeah, somewhere around there. And then uh, also, if we take a look over here, where are we at right now? Well, we still got a pretty long ways to go before it crosses over again. But uh, if you're a believer in these types of charts, uh, you can see that we've got a little bit of ways to run. And for me, I feel that's a pretty bullish indicator. So that's what we have in the markets themselves. Let's take a look at today's top story, which is the trust. And when I saw this, I just thought it was just another great feather in the cap for Grayscale, which is uh, Grayscale has added on the Solana Trust. And they've done a lot of different things with different cryptocurrencies. But as a reminder, Grayscale, when they buy things, it pretty much goes into a black hole and they don't let it go, especially with Bitcoin. And when people get into it, they're not buying Bitcoin per se or uh, basic attention token or Cardano or anything like that. What they're buying is just shares so they are doing all the custody. They are dealing with all the hassles as far as what people as traditional investors don't want to do. But for that, you're going to pay a premium and there's a lockup period. So for me, when I see that Solana or anything has been added to a Grayscale Trust, I'm like, great, just take it off the market because it's not going to be there for at least a, for a year. So they got this just came out today, nine and a half million assets under management. And what's interesting to me is that uh, as, <laughs> is first of all, you can't get into it unless you're an accredited investor. So what, whatever that criteria is for you in your location, that is what it states. Minimum investment requirement, 25,000. The sponsor's fee is 2.5% annually. Assets under management, 9.4 million. So I look at it like this. Like if you're 
in the traditional space and you don't really feel comfortable with this, this is your play. This is your play to go to because they will do all the nitty gritty dirty stuff uh, as far as just like custody and making sure things don't get hacked, which is what I see every single day, people losing their investments left and right. And when you're investing things like, trust me, when people get into like something like this, it's not just a little 25,000, it might be. I think the majority are spending 250,000, half a million, million, millions of dollars. And uh, they don't wanna see that hacked because they forgot their pass key or their mnemonic phrase. So for me, I just see it's just a necessary evil and that's just what it is. Also on top of that, I was thinking to myself, well, what else do they have as far as what's available for Grayscale? Because I always kind of, it's, it's good to refresh ourselves. And Grayscale, as you may know, they've got uh, basic attention token, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, all right, Chainlink Trust. And what I want you to notice as I'm going through these is take a look, let me blow this up, take a look at the one month, three month, and trailing 12 months. So for basic attention, it, it hasn't been a, been a year yet, but look at the Bitcoin Trust. Over the month, yeah, it's been down 6% or so, but over the last three and 12, 20 and 232. Then if we scroll down, we take a look at uh, Bitcoin Cash for the year, 108%. Chainlink, trailing 12 months, hasn't been uh, 12 months yet for Decentraland Trust. And I had covered this story like a year and a half ago, whenever they, they added it in. Uh, what they were talking about as far as, not Grayscale, excuse me, somebody else. But when you see the gains right here and when they added it, look at this, in just three months, 458%. Ethereum Trust, over the 12 months, 724%. Ethereum Classic, 653%. Filecoin, not enough time. 782 for Grayscale Horizon Trust, which is a, a big, big different baskets. Litecoin Trust, 182%. And then on down the line, down the line, you can just see that there are some pretty great um, returns in Grayscale. So it always is surprising to me when people, aka my family, shuns cryptocurrency like it is just some offshot thing that uh, will never go anywhere. And I'm like, look, um, it's not up to me to say the numbers don't lie. And this is what we really have. And then when they, when people are talking about, ah, but the traditional space and these hedge funds are really great. These numbers that we just saw right here, no hedge fund can match this, none. So, and if you don't believe me, just take a look at this. This is an article I just dug up. This is from uh, US News. Five of the top hedge funds in 2021. This is just right here. We're almost at the very end. We're almost at December 1st. It states here, it's a world of 70% gains and 10 billion swings. The world's best hedge funds are hardly boring. Sure, I just fell asleep just reading that one. So look at this one. Their number one pick, Renaissance Technologies. And not to take anything away from Renaissance. They've done a fantastic job. But look at this. With 66% average annual return since 1988, great job. 39% after fees, Renaissance's medallion fund is in a league of its own. Yeah, um, that's a great fund. I mean, traditional space, that is fantastic. Again, in crypto, we call it a Tuesday. So congratulations if you're in the traditional space and you just came over, you're in for a great ride. And uh, that's just how I see things as far as it's a good play for Solana and what's going to happen. So now I'd like to just really quickly talk about is because we talk about Solana. Let's just talk about our the Solana trust. Let's talk about what is Solana and what makes it uh, available and desirable for the trust. Well, real quick, Solana itself, pretty fast ecosystem for everything's uh, as far as like the ability as far as transactions per second and proof of history, which is everybody always uh, talks about. Look at these uh, these TPSs, right? You've got almost 2000 here's the total transactions and this is something that right now ethereum as big as it is really can't compete with this is average cost per transaction 0. 0.00025 ton of validator nodes and it is uh proof of stake so i mean as far as a an ecosystem and what things are doing and how fast they're doing it's pretty great on top of the fact it also has uh, NFTs. This is Solan Art. I've bought a couple of different uh, NFTs off that. Soul Chicks. That's a pretty big one. Or I don't know the rest of them. Degenerative Ape. Something other. Soul Punks. Sure. So it already has that built out as well as they got a pretty great wallet called uh, Phantom Wallet. And in Phantom Wallet, here's one of my NFTs, one of the Cyber Pharmacy 
uh, NFTs, and you can actually see them in there, which I think is uh, is pretty cool. On top of the fact that it's super cheap to do anything in this wallet and transfer things around, on top of the fact that you can actually swap out Solana for USDT and USDC. So if you're looking for an option, uh, Phantom would be a uh, a pretty good one, and I'll put a link for that in the description. Now there is one downside to Solana, and I know people have talked about this, but let me reiterate, and that is the Masari initial ITO tokens for public blockchains. And when we take a look at things, we want things to be as decentralized as humanly possible. So just so you know, in the upper right-hand corner, Solana, see that pink area there where it says 48%? Uh, that pink is for insiders. And insiders includes all the team, the company, and venture capitalist purchase tokens. So right now, you got a lot of people holding a little bit of Solana, and that's just how it is. Now, later on, as they sell off and do these things, it will become less decentralized. But for right now, that's what it is, and that's how they have things. And you can compare this to Ethereum, Binance, which everybody talks about as being not decentralized, because guess what? It is not. Uh, you got 50% are insiders, and that blue was a public sale. So 50-50, but just be aware that people can dump on you. But it's uh, been in the top three for, actually top four, top three for uh, quite a long time. Polkadot, Cardano, uh, good one. Avalanche, also the same type of thing. But as things get sold off, they'll become more decentralized over time. And that's what we have for Solana. And it actually looks like a pretty good play as more people, as far as the traditional finance people, are like, hey, I want to get into this because I don't know about securing things or being uh, custody, but I like doing things through Grayscale. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our second to last piece, which is Bitcoin in the modern portfolio so this is a conference coming up that's free to attend and it's uh it was sent to me by iTrust, and this is going to be there's going to be four people there i've already signed up it's gonna be wednesday december 1st i think it's interesting because if we can find a really great way for bitcoin to be a part of everybody's portfolio imagine the price of bitcoin then imagine the price of all the different altcoins that'll go up even if you're talking about um uh, retirement, if you're talking about, you mean these hedge funds getting into it, like we just talked about, and people actually picking up uh, countries, legal tender, everybody can use Bitcoin, the price can go up tremendously. And here's just a discussion about that. So it's going to be again Wednesday. You got Anthony, uh, VP of Growth at iTrust Capital, Noel uh, uh, Acheson, Head of Market Insights Genesis, hope I said that right, uh, Chris. Whooper, quite, I, I'm not gonna try it. Director of Research, Fidelity Digital Assets, and then Nate Conrad, Global Head of Assets Management at NYDIG. I think this is a pretty solid uh, round table. And just as a reminder, NYDIG, they're no slouch. Those are the guys that uh, are bringing partnerships to the banks to bring them into crypto. Not the big banks, because they don't know, they're gonna get blockbuster, but the small and medium sized banks, and even the credit unions to offer crypto to their customers. And this was an article we covered in June. NYDIG partnership could bring Bitcoin to your local credit union. And it states uh, institutional Bitcoin shop NYDIG partnered with Texas fintech firm Q2 to provide Bitcoin access to Q2's 18.3 million users. Q2 is behind the scene player providing online banking software to over 450 small and medium sized banks and credit unions. NYDIG was tapped by Anthony Scaramucci Skybridge to custody its pending Bitcoin exchange traded ETF. So a couple of things. First of all, I'm glad to see that uh, these smaller banks and credit unions, like the ones probably in your city, are getting a part of this because if they can have, they, they can like, I see it like this. Not everybody's like us. Not everybody's gonna be like, oh, I can't wait to get a Ledger or a Tezos or a, a, any kind of like hardware wallet and uh, play around with the buttons and hopefully not lose my pass race and I should be okay. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen for my mom. It's not going to happen for a lot of people around here. So I think the banks could be like a stepping stone until we get them, you know, if we get everybody trained as, as much as possible. But some people just don't have the time to do it. So I applaud NYDIG for doing these things and bringing these into there. Also, these small different uh, banks and credit unions, they employ a lot of people in the community. So let's keep that going. I don't see the problem with that. The problem, I think, is like the big banks, like the Wells Fargo's and the Chase's, just too big and uh, hopefully they can fail a little bit. On top of that, uh, the story about Anthony Scaramucci, I'm gonna ask him about that when he's on the show, which will be the uh, first week of January. I'm curious to see what they're doing with NYDIG and how it's gonna work out with their ETF and if it gets approved. So that's uh, what's going on with that uh, 
conference. Let me show you. I will link this in the description where you can sign up and uh, check it out. If not, I'll be doing a report on it. But I think it's interesting to see how Bitcoin can fit into everything as far as a modern portfolio. But also don't forget the people we're talking about that about in this story, I trust capital. Uh, they are one of my cash out strategies uh, for when the next bear market comes. And I, I try to dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out. I know some people will say, I'm just gonna do loans all the way out. And you can do that, that's fine, but this is what I'm I'm doing. So I've got one of two, one, two punches. One is I trust capital, Roth IRA, same thing that Peter Thiel did to make uh to have billions tax-free, I highly recommend it. And also Masterworks. So Masterworks, it is uh, investing into fractionalized shares of multi-million dollar pieces of art. So when you get all this money out, what are you gonna do with it? Just have it sit there in your bank account? Well, you can do that, but guess what? There's this nasty, nasty, sneaky tax, I call it, which is inflation. So if you wanna take a look at Masterworks, take a look at iTrust Capital, there is a link in the description. It looks just like this. And when you click on that link, that can take you to iTrust Capital, where if you sign up, you get $100 worth of Bitcoin. On top of the fact is that there are no monthly fees anymore. They took those away at the beginning of this month. So, or actually, excuse me, the middle of this month. So there's no fees for iTrust Capital, but there is a 1% trading fee when you do your trades within the iTrust Capital IRA. And also you can do our deep dive and sign up for Masterworks. You can skip the wait list and that link's in the description. So check that out. And then to finish it all up, round it all out, Korea taxes. So I actually stole this from Simon Yu <laughs> from, from StormX. And uh, he shared this. I thought it was interesting. Finance Committee approves legislation delaying tax in South Korea. And I found this fascinating because why they did it. The amendments which also envisage the increase of an exemption on capital gains tax for real estate sales amid rising property prices are viewed by Korean politicians as a popular proposition ahead of the upcoming presidential election in March next year. The question I have is this, is it is so popular, crypto and capital taxes or capital gains taxes is so popular uh, in Korea, or they don't want the capital gains tax, is they're like, you know what, hmm, we're politicians, and we're going to just delay that for a year until we get it the right way. It's amazing to me, I know I'm going to get ridiculed in the comment section, you're so naive, Rob, sure, that, that the politicians can't see it like that, and they pass these crazy laws, or trying to pass these crazy laws, which really go against crypto and really raise capital gains to like this unbelievable level. And they just think we're just gonna step, just step by or just stop by and just go, go ahead and let them pass. It's just amazing to me that America has fallen so fast and the people just don't do the research to figure out what's actually the best things for them. And if they think that cryptocurrency and we should just have these huge legislations and just shut it all down and have these uh, massive things hanging above our head, it just befuddles me. I don't understand. But uh, that, I think, is just an interesting prospect of where things are going. Then to finish up, uh, the two Korean parties have agreed to postpone the adoption of a 20% tax on annual profits from virtual asset investments exceeding 2.5 million won or 2,100 bucks. Government plan to introduce the tax on January 1st, but the voting indicates the tax is likely to be suspended until 2023. And wouldn't that be great? Is if the government body could say, you know what, we just don't have enough information. Let's just push it, kick the can down the road a little bit longer until we figure it all out, as opposed to passing some really bad legislation. What are you gonna do? All right, so that's it for today. So look, uh, if you like today's uh, video, found a little uh, entertainment, a little advice, uh, give us a thumbs up. I'll consider subscribing. I think we talk about our time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.